We are at Terrificon 2022. Mark and Calvin, hey, this is going to be a lot of fun. Now, the nice thing about Terrificon is if you are really into comics, this is the convention you want to go to. Absolutely. Uh, it's, uh, uh, they're in the newer expo space over here at Mohegan Sun. It's very spacious. It's easy to walk around. They got a ton of comic artists, comic writers, um, comic people. All, all, all sorts of, of, of cool stuff. Terrific Con is one of the best cons, if not the best overall con in New England when it comes to this stuff. Um, and, and I'm sure we're going to find a bunch of cool things. Yes, we've already found a few goodies. Like I got the opportunity to speak with Carl Potts, who was the creator of Alien Legion, one of my favorite comic book series. That was pretty awesome. That was awesome. Didn't get an interview. I just got a chance to chat, but it was still pretty cool. You, you've picked up a couple of things so far. Yep, I picked up a couple of Elseworlds books that I've been looking for um, a lot of fun and let's go see what else we can get into Terrific Con 2022. We're just walking into, we haven't even gotten to the main exhibit yet. We just happen to be walking by Gary Summers, pop culture extraordinaire. Guy that's behind Northeast Comic Con, does a ton of stuff. Gary, how's it going? Aloha, kids. Aloha. So what have you been up to? What's going on? Well, putting on shows, Northeast Comic Con coming up uh, Thanksgiving weekend in Boxborough, Mass. We haven't announced the guests yet, but there's almost, I guess we're sold out of vendor space pretty much always, but it's guaranteed not boring and there's free parking that's november 25 to 27 got a little small collectible show october uh, one and two in boxborough and then we're putting on the high lifestyle show which is a comic con for cannabis lovers that's a little interesting talk a little bit more about that well the show is kind of like exhibitors or people that are interested in the cannabis culture in the marketplace it's 21 plus to get in uh it's private property at the hotel so there'll be open consumption in the parking lot Lots. And we have live music with the Whalers, Roots of Creation, Michaela Davis, John Butcher Axis, lots of great bands. And there'll be some programming like uh, comedy and games and uh, panels, you know, just like a Comic Con. Celebrity guests, you never know who's going to show up at one of my shows. That's true. And, and with Northeast, you always have a, a really electric bunch of, of guests coming in. You have a bunch of comic artists and you usually have some fandom stuff, some cars players and matches. Malone comes over and is always doing stuff so that's really cool but um, you also have something else coming out a sci-fi rock opera I do <laughs> one moment Prepped. Oh, I'm so prepped. Yes, Beasties is sci-fi rock opera. I've been working on this for 50 years. In the last six years, I've actually started working on this, and it's hitting Earth soon. And, of course, Beasties are the human emotions. We all have them, but can you see your Beasties, or can you see other people's Beasties? Well, it's a rock opera. There's 15 songs, animation. Um, I'm very lucky to have Dave Bickler the voice of Eye of the Tiger as one of our singers. Yep. Barron's Whitfield of the Savages is one of the singers. Uh, Chris Farlow, who had the hit single Out of Time in 1966 and sings with Jimmy Page and Van Morrison and the Stones. He's one of our singers. He plays the villain, Dick Trader. And uh, it's a really fun show, fun uh, music, uh, many different v v styles of music, and I'm really psyched to finally get it out those are the characters Ooh, you'll see it too there's a video online go to beastiesrockopera.com okay and i'll have to get in touch with you back in november and, and when upcoming in november and we'll talk a little bit more about that and see how that's coming along thank you for taking a minute to spend time with us enjoy the rest of terrific con and i'll see you soon i hope you're going to be at the northeast comic con you always are you've been there for 35 years right i've been there a while yes i am showing my age and i will be at this one thank you so much you're welcome Welcome. I am with Leo. Hi, Leo. Hey, Mark. How's it going? It's going very well. Thank you. And you are with a podcast called The Dorkening? Well, The Dorkening is a podcast network. It started off as a show in 2013 and uh, just sort of grew from there. Uh, I had a bad experience with another network and didn't like how I was treated, so I decided, hey, you know, other podcasters could be going through this. So I decided to form a network, you know, uh, and to help other podcasters. Okay. Now, for newbies like myself who know nothing about podcasting, what's 
it's podcasting and what's the difference between that and like a, a TV show for example well so podcasting originally uh, started out through the RSS which is really simple syndication uh, and most of it well all of it was audio some pod podcasts started doing video as well uh, and it's uh, just you know a, a show type format that's just on the internet that's you know shared everywhere you know like you know you load it in one place and then it gets populated in like iTunes Spotify and everywhere uh, so our show we do audio and video we actually start as video and then rip the uh, audio from that for the audio podcast okay and how many um, how many other podcasts are in, are in your group uh, we got about 40 shows on a network we're just adding another seven and uh, we got a ton of responses this weekend so uh, you know hopefully that'll be growing good now is this something that you make a profit from or you just do it for fun how does that work uh, well I can't say the exact numbers because my wife could listen <laughs> uh, no profit right now uh, you know a lot of it is the labor of love but also I'm helping a lot of podcasters out you know like every podcast that's on our network they get like unlimited uh, podcast hosting uh, website hosting and there's a bunch of other tools as well that I provide for them now besides um, uploading to their own websites do they also do like YouTube for example yeah yeah some of our shows do YouTube uh, and uh, some just do audio uh, a lot of them like just do Facebook sometimes as well but you know all depends on where they think their fans are now if someone wants to check out this network um, how do they get in touch well you can head on over to the and I'll go out there's a longer URL for like keywords and stuff but just go to the dorkening.com uh, and we also have a, a, a comic book club as well which is our splash pages so I do about five podcasts a week myself uh, so I'm recording Mondays Tuesdays and Wednesdays uh, so splash pages is our comic book club that we started uh, and with that we have three other podcasts so we have the splash pages podcast and we also have the Facebook group uh, and we also have uh, the dork night which is a Batman focused podcast and uh, also comics paradox which is elseworlds uh, so dealing with like what ifs and, and elseworlds on DC side yeah that's interesting because my buddy Calvin who's here has been looking for back issues of elseworlds comics all oh week. nice you know we just read I don't know if it's labeled as an elseworlds but we just read speeding bullets oh my god that's amazing it, it's it's uh, what if uh, Cal L uh, Superman landed in Gotham the Waynes raised him and uh, you know they obviously they died and he becomes Batman his bat symbol is sort of like a mix between the Superman symbol and the Batman symbol uh, but you know it's just his journey of like starting off as Batman brooding and everything and then like returning back to hope it's just an amazing story now one last question um, yeah. while I'm thinking of it uh, um, how long does each podcast last on, on the app well all, all depends you know uh, a lot of our shows I it, like especially if it's like an interview uh, we'll try to keep to like an hour uh, but there are some that will go like uh, you know two three four hours you know it all depends on the subject matter uh, and you know sometimes we'll break up shows as well okay. wonderful so check out the dark thing Leo thank you very much hey, thank you Mark. all right let's see what else is going on at Terrificon Terrificon 2022 and we are here with Kyle from First Impression Comic Pressing. Now comic pressing is basically a technique that you can use to maybe take care of a little uh, a couple of defects or so and a comic book if there's something that you have that might be worth some money if you're looking to get it graded but Kyle can talk a little bit more about that. Kyle how you doing? Good how about yourself? I'm doing fine. How's Terrificon going for you guys? Good. Great show. L love being out east. All right, so um, where are you guys based out of first off? And then talk a little bit about what you guys do and why is it important to have a comic press? Sure. Um, we're based out of Chicago. Uh, and what we do is we try to make the books as um, look as good as they're going to get. And so you want to do that, A, for uh, preservation and collection and, you know, put them back away so that, you know, they're not still degradating uh, in the actual uh, cases. Or you want to get, a, you want to get them graded um, and you want to get the highest grade available. So, and there's two reasons for that. You know, you got a lot of private collectors that just literally get them back from grading, put them back away, and then they save them for their kids or for their own selves. Or um, in the today's market, you know, you uh, have a lot of people flipping books, uh, trying to monetize them. So uh, we basically try to um, get all the books with defects in them um, out. And so you, you get a higher grade. Um, 
We also offer uh, signatures on the books. Uh, so we're uh, facilitating at the show here for CGC. So uh, we can actually do it for uh, either company, just one at a time. So we, uh, once we actually get the books either signed or just bring them in for pressing, once they're ready to go, we can actually send them to either company for, uh, for grading. All right, so what kind of defects are you talking about that you could maybe like get out? So pressing, so literally you're putting it in a press? Yes, so uh, the actual, uh, the major defects that we, we get out are either little finger bends or wrinkles in older books, um, spine rolls, uh, or even some of the waves that you see in some of the brand new books that come out because the covers are so vibrant with a lot of ink, you'll get a little bit of wave and it kind of looks like humidity damage. Um, and it does affect uh, the grading on some of the books. So th those are the, the main things that we do. Uh, we also do uh, dry cleaning. Um, we don't use any chemicals or humidification in our process. Um, and basically dry cleaning is essentially removing different types of debris and dirt off the books uh, using different types of erasers. And so, you know, knowing which, which uh, type of eraser to use for what, what kind of uh, debris or transfer of ink off the books um, basically brightens them, also gives them an opportunity to have a higher grade. How long does the process usually take to do like a particular sort of like a regular type of book? So uh, modern books are uh, pretty fast so we can actually um, our facility right now is doing 36 books an hour um, and we can actually do uh, moderns at one pass. Uh, the actual uh, charge for our uh, our pressing is uh, $15 for older books, 12 for newer, and that covers up to three times on the on the press. So say you have an older book um, and they have the subscription crease in them, you know, from being stuffed in an envelope back in the 60s and 70s. Um, you know, sometimes it breaks color, sometimes it doesn't, but it always leaves a little hump in the middle. That one will take up to three times, you know, on the press to actually get it to lay flat. Some of the other uh, defects um, on older books takes that long. And what we found too is that the poly bag crease on newer books takes a couple times to actually come out as well. So you'll see that on, you know, the, the ever, ever popular Ultimate Fallout 4 or the, the Miles Morales Spider-Mans, those all have a little while to come out as well. And I assume the, the process is also working like some of the higher grade, like, you know, prestige like type books of the heaviest stock? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, even uh, the card stock, if it's, if it's not creased where it has a color break, they can be corrected. Um, and we, I've noticed that um, some of the some of the books, uh, Aftershock, and some of the newer uh, companies actually are putting out a, a great book. But you know, being shipped by the various uh, distribution uh, companies now, or even handled on the actual retail um, uh, shelves, they sometimes incur little bends in the in the corners or on the top, and that definitely can can be taken out. Okay, so you do stuff here at the show, so people can drop off. But I assume they can also send into you. You have a website that our viewers can go for like more information. Absolutely. So it's uh, it's www.firstimpressionpressing.com. Uh, uh, we have everything there. Uh, it'll have all the listings of the shows that we're doing at the time, all the information for uh, the different types of pressing, the different turnaround times that we have, um, as well as uh, we do uh, sports cards and trading cards as well. So uh, we can actually uh, correct small bends, uh, some of the actual uh, defects along the edging um, on those, and that's becoming more more popular, you know, as, as the market is starting to increase in value with a lot of that stuff. So um, we're, we're currently not um, uh, dealers with PSA or Beckett, but we do send uh, stuff in all the time to, to either company. So we're basically a one-stop shop for your paper collectibles where we can get them uh, nice and flat, get the defects out, and we can get them onto grading. Um, and just recently, I've been doing a lot of movie posters and uh, lobby cards. So if, if it's uh, it's collectible, it's paper, we can we can get it uh, a fix up for you. Yeah, so it's basically, like you were saying, it's twofold. If you want to have it for your press and collection, you can get the best that you can possibly get it to look. And if you are looking to monetize it or whatever, as you well know, you know, just a difference in, in like a, a point or two could make a, a big difference when it comes to actually selling it. Yep. And, and, you know, and, and sometimes even if it's say, um, say it's a four five, or I'm sorry, four five. Uh, so it's a it's a four five to four zero oh, um, book, and it comes back four five four zero, oh, um, but it looks nice and clean. 
uh, but the color breaks or the defects or say a rip, you know, it keeps it there. I, I have found that all my, my uh, clients that are resellers, they sell them so much faster because it looks so much better. It's not all wrinkled. It's not, you know, and it's able to, to, to move, you know, uh, on in the marketplace a little bit easier. All right, Kyle, thank you for taking a few minutes for us at Sci-Fi Journal and rest of, right, enjoy the rest of the con. <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks for, thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. With Don. Hi, Don. How are you doing? Now, give us the name of your shop. Um, um, see what I saw is the name of my shop. Okay, and you you do a lot of scroll work. Yes, I do. This is uh, all um, art that's off a of scroll saw. Okay, nice. And how did you get started doing this? Um, actually, my grandfather showed me how to use a, gross, a scroll saw very when I was very young, and I just uh, just incorporated from there and grew up in, in, with it. Okay. And everything, uh, and it went from silhouettes up to puzzles up to uh, now more intricate um, scroll saw work, okay. which we call fret work. How long have you been doing that? Um, I've been doing this, um, the, the fret work and puzzles for about the last 20 years plus, so. Nice, now I noticed your Star Wars shirt, yes. and a lot of, is that one of your uh, more influences, or do, or do you have a favorite character or a style that you no, like to do? I've always been in the Star Wars. Okay. There is, um, but I, I understand there's all different ones, so I, I, I try to keep it uh, available for, for more people. Okay. Cool. Now, if people want to get in touch with you, they've seen all this great artwork, and they might want to buy something, how do they get in touch? Um, I have a Facebook page, chow.scroll.saw. Okay. And that's the best way to get in touch with you. That is correct. Awesome. Yeah. Some awesome work here. Nice job. Thank you. Okay, Don. Thank you very much. Let's see what else is going on at Terrificon. All right. Nice. So terrific con. You always find these really cool booths and vendors, and the one I found, one of them is, uh, it's getting dicey. It is. Oh my goodness, it's huh? getting dicey. All right, so I'm talking to... Cass. And... Herman. Nice to meet you guys. All right, tell us a little bit about your company. What is it that you sell, and how'd you get started? We literally just sell dice and dice-related accessories. Uh, part of the reason being is because I bought an $80 dice set online, and when we got it in, it was garbage, so... We encourage people to come and test out the dice, roll them. We are firm believers that they pick you as much as you pick them. We have dice sets starting at $5, going all the way up to $120 to fit any budget. First and foremost, we're players and a DM. He's been DMing for over 30 years. Um, we're very passionate, and we love other people that are love what we do as much as we do. So Now, what kind of games are you uh, DMing? Uh, mostly Dungeons and Dragons, but uh, Cyberpunk, uh, a variety of other tabletop role-playing games like C Call of Cthulhu, mm -hmm. so a variety of things. Okay. And our dice, we have so many that are for so many different games. Right. Yeah? See, uh, we're part of the Rhode Island Science Fiction Club. Mm -hmm. We're like an offshoot of them. And for years, we uh, hosted gaming nights with Shadowrun yep. and the West End Star Wars mm -hmm. and, and those kind of games too. And Star Trek, we did Star Trek yep. for a little while. We did a little bit of D&D uh, &D as well. So tell us about some of the materials that these things are made out of. So we have solid metals um, that start at 40. We have hollow metals that are 60 and they some of them actually jingle um, we have actual gemstone dice um, those are anywhere between 100 and 120 those are real labradorite uh, we have liquid core dice that actually are uh, resin cast but they actually have liquid in the center of them so they come alive when you um, when you roll them we have plastic dice we have inclusion dice um, that is my husband's machination. It's actually a scroll with the entire spell for 5th edition on it, plus the necessary dice to, in order to be able to cast the spell. Oh, that's cool. Um, we even have starter kits that come with a bag, a tray, a pencil, character sheet, and a one-shot dungeon for the new person that wants to start playing. Okay. Now, if you've never been involved in any type of gaming that involves dice, tell these folks why you should start in the first place. <laughs> it's epic. It really is. Um, so Dungeons and Dragons or any of the tabletop role-playing games, it's literally the sky's the limit. It's whatever you can do with your, your imagination. There's no set rules. Even even the player's handbook, it, at the beginning of it, most of them say these, these are guidelines. They're not rules. So you can literally do whatever the heck you want in it. Um, I mean, I have, a, I have an arcane trickster rogue that has PTSD by looking through keyholes because she kept rolling a one so it it's just it's crazy it's fun it's something you can do kids it it 
it's great for kids for the simple fact that it's an adventure they can go on, but they're safe in one location with their friends. So. And depending upon the imagination of the person who's uh, hosting this thing, too, it yeah. gets pretty creative. I mean, we had one time we were playing Star Wars, and we had a friend who wanted to throw a hand grenade in the middle of a hurricane, and we kept telling him that it's going to blow back in your face. So roll for it anyways. Guess what? He didn't live very long. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't know if you saw the new Dungeons & Dragons movie trailer. I've heard, yeah. But, yeah. like, that, if, if you watch the trailer, that's a very small portion of what you can do, and that trailer looks amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, a human turns into a giant owlbear, like, come on. Like, where do you get that anywhere else? You don't really see that in video games. It's, like, it's programming. I love video games, don't get me wrong, but it's programmed, which means there's set things that you can do. You don't have that with tabletop gaming. It's an epic shared world experience. Yeah. Everything you do in the game is all about being with your friends and riffing on each other, doing more and more crazy things in a very safe, fun, friendly environment. Because you have to use your imagination. <laughs> okay, now, if people want to get in touch with you, your company, what's the best way to get it's gettingdicey.com. As well as Facebook and Instagram. Yep. It's getting dicey. Yep. All right. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Thank you very much for talking to us. Yeah, absolutely. Good luck. Maybe we'll see you again around Comic Con. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're All excited. right. We'll be there. We're okay. We'll touch base. Let's see what else is going on at Terrificon. Okay, let's wrap up Terrificon 2022. What did you think, Calvin? Did you have a great time? I had a great time. Look, Terrificon is one of the best conventions, if not the best convention in all New England for this type of stuff. Mitch Halleck puts on an awesome show, had awesome guests, awesome comics, awesome writers, awesome everything. Right. No, this, play, this is really great. Seriously, if you ever looking to have, want to go to a like, comic convention, you've been worried about trying one, this is a really good one to start at. Yes, and the word is awesome. If you are really into comics, this is the convention you want to go to. You found a few treasures today. Yeah, I, I found some of the Elseworlds stuff I was looking for, which I am very happy with. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and it was really fun to be able to go ahead and, and look without being packed in like sardines. Yes, it was really good. And we got some really great interviews that we'll be showing uh, on Sci-Fi Journal. Oh, before I forget, today is July 31st, 2022. And on this day in infamy, George Jetson was born. Oh, man, really? Yeah, George <laughs> Jetson. If you go to IMDb or someplace and you look at the biography for George Jetson, you'll see his birth date is July 31st, 2022. That's today. Wow. I know. You. Uh, I can tell you're impressed. I am totally <laughs> impressed. Look at the big brain. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's going to be it for Terrificon 2022. I had fun. I always have fun hanging out with you, Calvin. It was a great time. It was great. Likewise. Yeah. Uh, so let's go back to the studio for the rest of the show.